Joining me now here on the MMA Report on Radio Influence, the man that's going to be stepping back into the victory cage coming up here on December the 23rd, Dakota Cochran. Dakota, I appreciate time. It's been some time since we've had the opportunity to talk, and you've been on an absolute roll here winning eight of your last nine fights. When you had gone through that spell where you had dropped four or five, what kind of, you know, was it more of a, a mental thing you had to get through than, than more of a physical thing? Yeah, I think the the most I've lost in a row is like two. Um, but yeah, it was like win, win one, lose two there for a while. Um, yeah, it's just tough. You just try to learn from your mistakes. And, you know, each fight that I lost, I try to learn from that mistake and then, you know, just keep making myself better as a fighter. And really, that's all, all I've just done is just try to learn from it and then move on, move on to the next fight. How much of, uh, at that time of your career, did you, was there a point where you just started to realize that, that taking fights, whether it was at a catch weight or, or at 155, just was not the right position to put yourself in? Yeah, the the 155, it started to get to where it was just too hard to make. Um, I never miss weight, but there was one fight, I think I was fighting for the RFA title. Um, I I couldn't eat or drink anything until up until basically the you know a couple hours before the fight so i was i was really stuck down still still dehydrated and i wasn't able to replenish myself every time i take a a sip of water i just puke it back up and you know that that happened in earlier fights but normally i was able to just wait a couple hours and then then i'd be able to hold some food down or water but it just that for some reason that fight I wasn't able to do it until the couple hours before the fight, and then I said my health isn't really worth it, so I just went up to 170. I remember uh, Bellator had announced that you were actually supposed to, to fight at Bellator 167, but uh, you're you know I know there were some contract issues with your opponent. And ultimately, now in, in the UFC, how disappointing was that for you, knowing kind of what ended up happening with him, and, and the fact now that he's in the UFC and Obviously, that that's pretty much the goal of every fighter. Yeah, I mean, it just seems like every every person I beat, they they like win one and then they're in the UFC or something like that. Or if I lose, they're automatically in the UFC. Um, but I, I guess I beat that kid that uh, the that what is his name uh, Al Hassan or something. He I beat the that kid at uh, Legacy. And then he fought in the next next weekend, so his opponent took it on a week's short notice, and then he beat him. So, like, when I fought him, he was on a five-win streak, and then he fought him, he lost to me, like, the weekend before, but yet he gets to go to the UFC. That, you know, that's a little frustrating, mm-hmm. but I- I'm, I'm kind of used to that, I guess. How do you not let frustrations in this sport get to you? Yeah, I mean, I just honestly stopped worrying about getting to the UFC and just started not giving a shit and then just uh, just take one fight at a time and just worry about that fight and whether, you know, not the repercussions if I lose or, if, you know, the rewards if I win. So just, just go in there and do my best and then what happens after that, I'll, I'll figure it out. You talk about taking one fight at a time, but uh, this is a fight coming up here on December 23rd that you're familiar with, rematch uh, against Jake Lindsay. You won the first matchup. So uh, for you, is there a lot to gain in this fight? Uh, I mean, I really don't think there's a lot to gain for either one of us. Uh, just because, you know, we already fought. And, uh, there's There's really not a lot to gain. Um, I could, he, I mean, he's the ex UFC fighter, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's really not, not much, but if I win, it's another win for, on my record. Um, just like him, if he win, it'd, it'd just be another win for his record. And, you know, ultimately they, they want those wins in a row before yeah. they'll sign you. So I don't know. It's, it's really just about the wins in a row, I guess, for either one of us. When you go back and you think about your preparations for the first fight and ultimately what happened in the first fight, did did he show you anything on fight night that caught you by surprise and maybe something you weren't expecting from him? 
Yeah, he was uh, he was really good at controlling, like um, putting the pressure on you, like when you're against the cage, just being like real heavy, and that was kind of surprising. Um, but obviously, I know that going into this fight, so um, yeah, and so I'm I'm pretty prepared for that. One of the cliches I've always heard in the fight game and when it comes to rematches is the fighter that lost the first fight has the advantage going into the rematch because they understand the mistakes they made in the first fight and what they need to do to correct those mistakes to get the victory. For you coming into this fight as a guy who won the first fight, it, what do you see as your advantage? Well, honestly, I was losing the, on the card. I was on the cards. I was losing the first two rounds. So if they would have ended the fight at the second round, I would have lost. So I was I was down actually, and then I just uh, I came out strong in that third round, and I knew I had to get a finish. So I I think I got him with some good strikes, and then he took a shot, and then I guillotined me. So it was uh, it was a tough battle, and I'm I'm expecting the same thing, I guess. As we're talking here, we're, uh, you know, this fight's coming up next Friday night. Uh, what, what's preparations like for the next 10 days or so for you? Uh, this next week will be uh, a little more vigorous, I guess. And then, or this week, I'm sorry, is a little more vigorous and doing more rounds. Um, and then next week, it's just all about doing some cardio and then cutting the weight. How often do you spar in your training camp? Um, not too often, like once once a week or maybe twice we'll do we'll do some light sparring so i guess if you count that would be twice is it one of those things of as you've gone on in your career being a veteran in the sport that you just realize that you don't necessarily have to be sparring three times a week because that seems to be a number you you hear from a lot of guys will talk about when they're in fight camp it's it's three times a week they're sparring i i honestly haven't done that my career i've pretty much stuck to the one one or two times sparring um a, a week so i haven't really you know just gone out there and tried to knock someone out in practice i've never been that kind of partner um yeah so it, it's pretty much the same for me and of course this card will be on ufc fight pass so if you're not a fight pass uh so, so a member you can definitely go over to ufcfightpass.com so you can watch the victory K, victory fights here one thing i, I want to mention about you know victory it's it's a unique it's not you know it's a, it's a cage but it's a square cage how is how is it different fighting in, in their in their canvas as opposed to say a promotion that has a circle or cage yeah it's it is a little bit different but um, a lot of it's the same i mean the only i would say big difference is you can get caught in the, in the corner with, you know, obviously that's not a, not a case with the round cage. So if you're, I, I really don't mind it, but it's a, a thing you got to be aware of. If you don't like being trapped in the corner, then you probably should stay away from the corner. Uh, you know, I mean, obviously you have to prepare for everything you know, that can happen in a fight. So is it one of those things of inside your training room, you just find a, a corner of the wall and basically you try to, to simulate the best you can of how you would get out of that situation? Yeah, I I haven't uh, honestly prepped much for the corners. Um, I, we, we always practice against the wall or we actually have a round cage myself in, in our gym, so... We don't do a whole lot of corner work. I guess in the boxing is probably the most time we we practice with the corners. Um, so stand up, I would say, yeah, we we practice that quite often. But ground game, we we honestly don't. And of course, uh, this will they'll wrap up 2016 for Victory FC. Also wrap it up for for Dakota. Uh, as you start to think of 2017, what anything on the horizon at this point? Um, I think I have to defend my uh, TWC uh, title in, in earlier in next year. But um, they, they talked about me maybe fighting for the 70 title and see, we'll see how that goes for the victory. Um, yeah, honestly, I'm just kind of, like I said, taking one fight at a time. So not really stressing or worrying about it too much. Dakota, I really appreciate time. Good luck here uh, coming up next week at the victory card. Well, thank you very much.